Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. I'm going to run a clip that we shot on the same night as the object that the Huff Post ran. Um, that night I shot one that was a long run and Croet shot one that was a bit better object but not quite in frame as long. Now, a lot of people ask me, Crow, how, how do you know these things that you talk about? Well, what I'm going to do here is in this first clip I'm going to run the live audio to demonstrate that I, I have an idea of what's going on before I even get into the edit room to do the review and to do the lookup on things. So I will show you the clip with live audio and then we'll go into, you know, what do I do to know the things that I know to confirm or disconfirm. And uh, this story will happen to have a twist. So here we go. Oh, there's one. Good one. Want to press it's a satellite. I think. Look at that. So there's a good example of probably a satellite. Okay, so I did a look up and the closest candidate is a satellite called Picard, believe it or not. Um, named after Jean Picard, a French astronomer. Um, at any rate, as you know, I allow 15 minutes early, 15 minutes late in satellite lookups to consider them. This one's the only one around and very close. So let's look at some data on Picard. Okay, so some data on the Picard satellite. First of all, the lookup informed me that the altitude is 726 kilometers, which is something like 450 miles. And the strange thing about this is, you know, low Earth orbit's 200 plus miles, so it's 450 miles. It's not going very fast, and this is atypical. It's going 5 kilometers per second. Usually things in low Earth orbit are going much, much, much faster than this, crossing the face of the moon or being backlit by the moon in a second or less, literally. Sometimes you can't really see them unless you get them in an editor and slow them down. So there's that to think about. But anyhow, here's the information on the Picard satellite. It's dedicated to simultaneous measurement of the absolute total and spectral solar irradiance, the diameter and solar shape, and to the sun's interior probing by heliosismol or heli yeah, heliosismology method. So they tell you what it's about. And uh, the funny thing about this is I looked into it. It's almost like it's more important them to tell us why they named it after Picard, which is always strange to me. Um, it's named after a French astronomer, Jean Picard, 1620-1682, who achieved the first accurate measurements of the solar diameter. Um, and they make a big deal out of this because apparently the sun was changing diameter and they haven't answered the question as to why, but they're questioning uh, if sunspots have to do with it. In other words, they noticed the sun diameter was small when there were no sunspots and it was way cold in Europe, abnormally cold. And I guess this changed when sh sunspots showed, showed up again. So uh, moving along, I actually found a picture of this one, which you can't always do very easily. So here it is. The Picard satellite. Um, does this look anything like the thing I imaged? Um, kind of crazy, right? But anyhow, let me just jump back real quick and see if there's anything more. Oh, Picard will use the Myriad oh, micro satellite platform. Well, that's something, right? Micro satellite. What could that possibly mean? So I'm looking at this thing that's almost certainly the Picard satellite. Um, it was 13 minutes early in the satellite lookup. I filmed it at 7. It was 13 minutes before that that it showed up on the satellite trackers. And as I have said many times, I accept things 15 minutes on either side. And to be honest, even if it's a half hour off and it's perfect speed, trajectory and all that, I'll consider it because as I've shown before, the satellite tracking things are not real accurate. They're stated to be not really accurate and you got to update them literally by the hour to even be close. So there's that. Um, but let's delve in a little bit deeper. Now that we're 90% sure that we have the Picard satellite, we've learned all this and we've learned how important it is for them to tell us who they named it after. We've seen the image of the satellite and we get over here to a page dedicated to the Picard. And uh, let's see if there's anything, not much there. 
says here microsatellite. Picard is a CNES solar satellite of the Myriad series. Moving along, moving along. Just what it does and the computer system and all that. And uh, lo and behold, what I find is the measurements. Houston, we have a problem. Before we continue and gather more data, I would just like to say, in light of the historical inaccuracies, falsehoods, and lies that Houston has fed us, I would just like to say, Hanson, I, I mean Houston, just quit talking to us. The measurements of this satellite, according to what's being provided here, are 90 centimeters by 80 centimeters by 100 centimeters. And if I remember correctly, 90 centimeters is roughly 35 inches. So I ask you, is there any way on God's green earth that my telescope saw an object that was 35 inches across from 450 miles away? So the whole reason I've brought this up is because when I was shooting, I was reasonably sure as I shot it that this was a satellite. The way I know this is because I have shot enough satellites that I could identify that I'm familiar with how they look. This one was a bit different in that its speed was slower, but I was still pretty sure I was shooting a satellite. But when I dig into the data here, uh, everything looks good, everything's lining up, I get a picture of it, but this thing's 35 inches across. Um, and if I do the calculation that I provided to the rebuttal for the Huffington Post, um, I would say, I would round it from 11,000 miles out to 12, say it's a third, cut it back, this is very rough estimates, there's no way in hell my telescope can see something 35 inches across at 450 miles. So, there it is. This is the conundrum that we live in sometimes. Cheers.